Hello everyone, welcome to October 12th, 2020. Well, finally, it feels like fall out there. The cold front that came in over the weekend, bringing about a change from the summer-like weather to one that's a little more familiar to us around here for this time of year. Northwest winds aloft are gonna be with us all week and into the weekend. Now, Northwest winds aloft is a very tricky pattern. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about when you bring air from high latitudes to lower latitudes, the spin of the earth causes more spin in the higher latitudes and lower latitudes. And when you bring that spinning air quickly from high latitudes to low latitudes, well, a lot of things happen with the dynamics and the thermodynamics of the atmosphere. So you don't want to trust long range forecasts in this weather pattern because the computer modeling does not do well with Northwest flow. So we kind of take Northwest flow maybe two days, maybe one day at a time. Try not to look too far ahead because if you stick to one computer model in the long range forecast in Northwest flow, you can really be burned. A lot of times in the fall season and winter seasons, long range forecasts are just worthless in Northwest flow. And I'll give you an example of that here in a moment. Up and down temperatures happen in Northwest flow, windy periods in Northwest flow, and occasionally some precipitation. This will be especially true along and east of the divide. For you podcast listeners that are in Western Colorado, Utah, Idaho, further west, you're going to be in a situation to where you're not going to get a lot of weather in this pattern, at least initially. Most of the action will be along the Continental Divide and east of the Divide. Here's some good news. This is a webcam shot this morning from the snowy range in the Mullen Fire. This is up near Rob Roy Reservoir, very close to where the fire has been very active. About two to three inches of snow fell over most of the Mullen Fire. Further north up into the higher terrain, just outside of the fire area, five inches of snow was reported and temperatures are in the teens and 20s there this morning. So that was great news. It's not enough to put out the fire, but it's a start to get the upper hand. Now, as we take a look at where we are today, here is yesterday's cold front that swept on through and notice how close together all these lines are. This is a very strong jet stream wind cutting across the area. That's going to make it really windy today, tonight, and tomorrow, especially along and east of the Continental Divide. As we get into Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night, there's actually another little wave coming in here, another little frontal system that's coming in into that northwest flow. And there actually could be a chance again as we get into Tuesday night, Wednesday, into Wednesday night and early Thursday that there may be some shower activity along this front as well, somewhat like the last front, although maybe not as much, but some showers. So high pressure along the west coast, off the west coast, up to the Gulf of Alaska, as we know, always directs weather into the Rockies and High Plains. Where things start to look different and where we have a lot of question marks and why we don't like to say don't what we like to say don't trust long range forecasts in this pattern is you get a really big change and i'm going to show you that here in a minute precipitation through thursday afternoon with that frontal system does show more moisture in the pacific northwest but also there's more potential snow and rainfall over the mullen fire with this front wednesday into early thursday and yellowstone park the wind rivers northern wyoming up into the black hills and look at montana well there's going to be some shower activity with this next front coming on through and there's even going to be some sprinkles or light showers over northeast Colorado in that northwest flow. Now let's take a look at the differences that we get when we go long term. I want to show you where we're going to be Thursday afternoon. A big high pressure ridge up into the Gulf of Alaska, not quite into the Gulf of Alaska, but off the Pacific coast. This guy right here is a pretty strong upper level weather disturbance in the northwest flow there's this low back up here what happens sometimes is that these two systems will merge flatten the high pressure ridge which will then direct the coldest wettest weather to the great lakes in new england however if this guy stays apart from this guy and slips southeast well you're going to have a big cold outbreak rain and snow along the divide late in the weekend and early next week so the models are disagreeing. What I'm showing you here is the European center model. 
When we have a high pressure ridge in the eastern Pacific, we usually have weather here. But if this ridge gets flattened out, well, then the weather is going to go more west to east. So as we take a look at the forecast for Monday, this is Monday the 19th, a week from today. We have a broad ridge of high pressure in the eastern Pacific, and we have another trough bringing precipitation and cold air in here late this weekend and early next week, according to the European model, staying under that northwest flow. But if we look at the American model, there's a huge difference. Instead of the high being in eastern areas of the Pacific, it's over the desert southwest. That sends all the cold, wet weather into the Great Lakes, into New England later on, and we go back to basically a dry, a little bit warmer than average weather pattern. So here we have the American model, a high here. If we go back and look at the European model, a high here. So look at the difference. This is only a seven day forecast. This is why you gotta be so, so careful this time of year in the changing seasons, not to buy anything that you see on your computer or your phone that goes out past five or seven days. Both solutions, folks, are completely possible. That high could end up there or it could end up there. This is a cold, unsettled, wet pattern for Sunday into Monday. This is a warmer, drier forecast for Sunday and Monday, quite the difference. Now the computer models are different because they're built differently. And we'll talk about this in further podcasts and get into a little bit more detail on why there's differences between computer models. But when we see a big difference like this, you have very, very low confidence in what's gonna transpire because it can basically mean cold or wet or warm or dry, really nothing in between. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. Have a good Monday. We'll see you on Tuesday.